Today is September the 14th. Today, Israel says, we want to be like everybody else. Today, as we read through the Bible in a year, please read Ezekiel 20 and 21. Now, he mentions uh, in the first verse of, of chapter 20 that this is the seventh year of King Jehoiachin's captivity. He started Ezekiel 1, 1 is in the fifth year, so this is just two years later, still fairly early in Israel's uh, time in, in Babylon, very early in Ezekiel's ministry of prophecy. He prophesies against Israel for their rebellion. And the basic issue we come up in chapter 20, verse 32. God says, you say, we want to be like the nations all around us who serve idols of wood and stone. That's the basic issue. Israel has been corrupted by watching its neighbors. They have gone after the gods of all of the other nations around them. The Lord says, I'll bring you back. I will take you back to Jerusalem, but you're not going to like it. Because when you get there, I will judge you. There will be judgment against those who continue in idolatry. But he says, some will serve me. Some will worship again in Jerusalem today. Let's read Ezekiel 20. And 21. On August 14th, during the seventh year of King Jehoiachin's captivity, some of the leaders of Israel came to request a message from the Lord. They sat down in front of me to wait for his reply. Then this message came to me from the Lord. Son of man, tell the leaders of Israel, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. How dare you come to ask me for a message? As surely as I live, says the Sovereign Lord, I will tell you nothing. Son of man, bring charges against them and condemn them. Make them realize how detestable the sins of their ancestors really were. Give them this message from the Sovereign Lord. When I chose Israel, when I revealed myself to the descendants of Jacob in Egypt, I took a solemn oath that day that I would bring them out of Egypt to a land I had discovered and explored for them, a good land flowing with milk and honey, the best of all lands anywhere. Then I said to them, Each of you get rid of the vile images you are so obsessed with. Do not defile yourselves with the idols of Egypt, for I am the Lord your God. But they rebelled against me and would not listen. They did not get rid of the vile images they were obsessed with or forsake the idols of Egypt. Then I threatened to pour out my fury on them to satisfy my anger while they were still in Egypt. But I didn't do it, for I acted to protect the honor of my name. I would not allow shame to be brought on my name among the surrounding nations who saw me reveal myself by bringing the Israelites out of Egypt. So I brought them out of Egypt and led them into the wilderness. There I gave them my decrees and regulations so they could find life by keeping them. And I gave them my Sabbath days of rest as a sign between them and me. It was to remind them that I am the Lord, who has set them apart to be holy. But the people of Israel rebelled against me, and they refused to obey my decrees there in the wilderness. They wouldn't obey my regulations, even though obedience would have given them life. They also violated my Sabbath days. So I threatened to pour out my fury on them, and I made plans to utterly consume them in the wilderness. But again I held back in order to protect the honor of my name before the nations who had seen my power in bringing Israel out of Egypt. But I took a solemn oath against them in the wilderness. I swore I would not bring them into the land I had given them, a land flowing with milk and honey, the most beautiful place on earth. For they had rejected my regulations, refused to follow my decrees, and violated my Sabbath days. Their hearts were given to their idols. Nevertheless, I took pity on them and held back from destroying them in the wilderness. 
Then I warn their children not to follow their parents' footsteps, defiling themselves with their idols. I am the Lord your God, I told them. Follow my decrees, pay attention to my regulations, and keep my Sabbath days holy. For they are a sign to remind you that I am the Lord your God. But their children, too, rebelled against me. They refused to keep my decrees and follow my regulations, even though obedience would have given them life and they violated my Sabbath days. So again I threatened to pour out my fury on them in the wilderness. Nevertheless, I withdrew my judgment against them to protect the honor of my name before the nations that had seen my power in bringing them out of Egypt. But I took a solemn oath against them in the wilderness. I swore I would scatter them among all the nations because they did not obey my regulations." They scorn my decrees by violating my Sabbath days and longing for the idols of their ancestors. I gave them over to worthless decrees and regulations that would not lead to life. I let them pollute themselves with the very gifts I had given them, and I allowed them to give their firstborn children as offerings to their gods, so I might devastate them and remind them that I alone am the Lord." Therefore, son of man, give the people of Israel this message from the sovereign Lord. Your ancestors continued to blaspheme and betray me. For when I brought them into the land I had promised them, they offered sacrifices on every hill and under every green tree they saw. They roused my fury as they offered up sacrifices to their gods. They brought their perfumes and incense and poured out their liquid offerings to them. I said to them, What is this high place you are going? This kind of pagan shrine has been called Bama, high place ever since. Therefore, give the people of Israel this message from the Sovereign Lord. Do you plan to pollute yourselves just as your ancestors did? Do you intend to keep polluting yourselves by worshipping vile images? For when you offer gifts to them and give your little children to be burned sacrifices, you continue to pollute yourselves with idols to this day. Should I allow you to ask a message from me, O people of Israel? As surely as I live, says the Sovereign Lord, I will tell you nothing. You say, We want to be like the nations all around us who serve idols of wood and stone. But what you have in mind will never happen. As surely as I live, says the Sovereign Lord, I will rule over you with an iron fist, with great anger, and with awesome power. And in anger I will reach out my strong hand and powerful arm, and I will bring you back from the lands where you are scattered. I will bring you into the wilderness of the nations, and there I will judge you face to face. I will judge you there as I did your ancestors in the wilderness after bringing them out of Egypt, says the Sovereign Lord. I will examine you carefully and hold you to the terms of the covenant. I will purge you of all those who rebel and revolt against me. I will bring them out of the countries where they are in exile, but they will never enter the land of Israel. Then you will know that I am the Lord. As for you, O people of Israel, this is what the Sovereign Lord says, Go right ahead and worship your idols, but sooner or later you will obey me and will stop bringing shame on my holy name by worshiping idols. For on my holy mountain, the great mountain of Israel, says the Sovereign Lord, the people of Israel will some day worship me, and I will accept them. There I will require that you bring me all your offerings and choice gifts and sacrifices. When I bring you home from exile, you will be like a pleasing sacrifice to me, and I will display my holiness through you as all the nations watch. Then, when I have brought you home to the land I promised with a solemn oath to give to your ancestors, you will know that I am the Lord. You will look back on all the ways you defiled yourselves, and will hate yourselves because of the evil you have done. You will know that I am the Lord, O people of Israel, when I have honored my name by treating you mercifully in spite of your wickedness. I, the Sovereign Lord, have spoken. Then this message came to me from the Lord. Son of man, turn your face to the south and speak against it. Prophesy against the brushlands of the Negev. Tell the southern wilderness, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. Hear the word of the Lord. I will set you on fire, and every tree, both green and dry, will be burned. The terrible flames will not be quenched, and will scorch everything from south to north. And everyone in the world will see that I, the Lord, have set this fire. It will not be put out. Then I said, O Sovereign Lord, they are saying of me, he only talks in riddles.
This message came to me from the Lord. Son of man, turn your face to Jerusalem and prophesy against Israel and her sanctuaries. Tell her, this is what the Lord says, I am your enemy, O Israel, and I am about to unsheath my sword and destroy your people, the righteous and the wicked alike. Yes, I will cut off both the righteous and the wicked. I will draw my sword against everyone in the land from south to north. Everyone in the world will know that I am the Lord. My sword is in my hand, and I will not return it to its sheath until its work is finished. Son of man, groan before the people. Groan before them with bitter anguish and a broken heart. When they ask why you are groaning, tell them I groan because of the terrifying news I have heard. When it comes true, the boldest heart will melt with fear. All strength will disappear. Every spirit will faint. Strong knees will become as weak as water. And the sovereign Lord says, It is coming. It's on its way. Then the Lord said to me, Son of man, give the people this message from the Lord. A sword, a sword is being sharpened and polished. It is sharpened for terrible slaughter and polished to flash like lightning. Now will you laugh? Those far stronger than you have fallen beneath its power. Yes, the sword is now being sharpened and polished. It is being prepared for the executioner. Son of man, cry out and wail. Pound your thighs in anguish. For that sword will slaughter my people and their leaders. Everyone will die. It will put them all to the test. What chance do they have? Says the sovereign Lord. Son of man, prophesy to them and clap your hands. Then take the sword and brandish it twice, even three times, to symbolize the great massacre. The great massacre facing them on every side. Let their hearts melt with terror, for the sword glitters at every gate. It flashes like lightning, and it's polished for slaughter. O sword, slash to the right, then slash to the left. Wherever you will, wherever you want. I too will clap my hands, and I will satisfy my fury. I, the Lord, have spoken. Then this message came to me from the Lord. Son of man, make a map and trace two routes on it for the sword of Babylon's king to follow. Put a signpost on the road that comes out of Babylon, where the road forks into two, one road going to Ammon and its capital, Riblah, and the other to Judah and fortify Jerusalem. The king of Babylon now stands at the fork, uncertain whether to attack Jerusalem or Riblah. He calls his magicians to look for omens. They cast lots by shaking arrows from the quiver. They inspect the livers of animal sacrifices. The omen in his right hand says Jerusalem. With battering rams, his soldiers will go against the gates, shouting for the kill. They will put up siege towers and build ramps against the walls. The people of Jerusalem will think it is a false omen because of their treaty with the Babylonians. But the king of Babylon will remind the people of their rebellion. Then he will attack and capture them. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says, Again and again you remind me of your sin and your guilt. You don't even try to hide it. In everything you do, your sins are obvious for all to see. So now the time of your punishment has come. O you corrupt and wicked prince of Israel, your final day of reckoning is here. This is what the Sovereign Lord says, Take off your jeweled crown, for the old order changes. Now the lowly will be exalted and the mighty will be brought down. Destruction, destruction will surely destroy the kingdom. And it will not be restored until one appears who has the right to judge it. Then I will hand it over to him. And now, son of man, prophesy concerning the Amorites and their mockery. Give them this message from the sovereign Lord. A sword, a sword is drawn to slaughter you. It is polished to destroy, flashing like lightning. Your prophets have given false visions, and your fortune-tellers have told lies. The sword will fall on the necks of the wicked for whom the day of final reckoning has come. Now return the sword to its sheath, for in your own country, the land of your birth, I will pass judgment upon you. I will pour out my fury on you and blow on you with the fire of my anger. I will hand you over to cruel men who are skilled in destruction." You will be fuel for the fire, and your blood will be spilled on your own land. You will be utterly wiped out, your memory lost to history. For I, the Lord, have spoken. Scripture reading from the New Living Translation by Emily Herrera. If you live in the Greenwood, Indiana area, and you're looking for a church, please... 
come check out New Hope Church. We're at 5307 West Fairview Road. Our Sunday morning service begins at 10 a.m. We'd love to see you there. Tomorrow, we'll look at the book of Psalms and hear the psalmists say, Restore us.